Give me this. What? You're driving. I know. What's the point? Get, get. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Jesus, that sounds the same as the last one. Oh my God. Jeez, we've had this car. We're still counting the hours that you've had this car. I know. Just like we still count the hours. That's how we measure your 40. Buffalo Wild Wings went out of business in Buffalo. Shocking. It's Mom not, and pop place on every corner. Not, Why would you do that? They're not good wings. They're just not good wings really? comparatively. I, love, comparatively. I, I like the Caribbean jerk uh, seasoning. Yeah, they got some. I'm not saying that You've their never food is it, hateful. But no, I'm not saying you their do food this, is hateful. Please? You've got a hair on your chin for the oh. entire ride. Oh, it's what? bothering me. Thanks, buddy. You were in the middle of a point every other time. For and then... the last hour? Yeah. So, uh, Eye of the Moment says, by when does Coach McDermott need to register a win against Belichick to be considered a legitimate head coach? Never. See, and I think the fan base thinks differently. So okay. I am happy to stand on the other side of this argument. Well, let me ask you and the fan base this. Okay. Is uh, Rex Ryan a legitimate head coach? Because he beat up Belichick a couple times. Mm -hmm. That's. But here's the counter. That's what got him hired. At, in Buffalo. In Buffalo. That's what got him hired in Buffalo. And that was the, that was the measuring stick, right? That's If you went down the street and pulled 100 people, right, and said... Rex Ryan's record against the Patriots is, do you think this makes him a good hire? If you frame the question that way, 90% of those people would have said, got to beat the Patriots to do anything in, in this in this league. You're going to, if his record against the Patriots is above or near 500, that's where we're going. I think that's, that gets a little too amplified. I see. And I just, I'm looking at when the hire was made, right? When the hire was made, that was the measuring stick. He's great, you know, not great, but he's competitive against Belichick. This move makes sense. The Jets' front office is a disaster. You know, they never make the right... They're always spending money on free agents, and none of them ever pan out. And, I mean, we're here seven years later, and nothing's any different for the Jets. But um, he was entering into Buffalo, and that was the excuse. It was the excuse of he wasn't in the right situation. That front office was a okay. joke. Um I think people did measure the Rex Ryan hire initially off of his success against the Patriots. And we're not talking great success. We're not talking great, just moderate success against Belichick. If that's your point, why isn't Tom Coughlin the highest paid coach in the league? I mean, he, got, he beat Belichick in two Super Bowls. Yeah. I mean, you think yeah, if that did. was the measuring stick. He did. Uh, he would be given like twenty five million dollars a year right well, now to coach a team. Let's be fair here. The Bills were trying to get Coughlin, and when? had been trying to get Coughlin. When are you kidding me? The last before he went to be a consultant in Jacksonville. That, sure. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yes. Paul. The Bills and Tom Coughlin were very connected. Paul, don't lie to me. I'm yeah. not lying. Yeah, to you. This feeling. is a fact. This hurts my feelings. This is a fact. I will get the date. It is a fact. Okay. While you're doing that, I, I don't I see oh man. Does he need to start beating him? Yeah, because it's a division rival. Right. But I don't I'm not looking at his win and loss record versus Belichick is to legitimize whether or not he's a good head coach. I, I guess I guess that's weird to say that. Because like is he gonna be a legit head coach if he could beat Adam Gase? If his team could beat Adam Gase, if his team can beat Flores down in Miami, like Okay, is is Andy? People don't even think Andy Reid's a legit head coach mm -hmm. because he hasn't won anything. Like, okay, are you ready for this? Talk to me. This is an article that was posted on USA Today, October fifth, two thousand sixteen. God, how can I remember an article posted October fifth of two thousand sixteen? But I can't remember my name. Yeah, you're like, you know, you said this to me yesterday. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Uh, former New York Giants coach Tom Coughlin said he met with the Buffalo Bills, uh, but it wasn't part of a plan to oust uh, head coach Rex Ryan. In fact, Tom Coughlin said that uh, he met with the Bills' ownership last spring, and it was Ryan who invited him. Do you know why? To pick his brain? Right, because Rex knew his that Rex knew he was done. 
So he's going to do exactly what you just said. He's going to go to somebody who is equally as effective against a division rival. Say, listen, I got, I talked to Coughlin. We've got, we, we, we think we got this division locked down. You know, we, we think we got it figured out. Of course, that's what you're going to do. Many other working parts go into it other than that. It doesn't take Rex Ryan to play man under too deep on the Patriots. I know, I know, I know. All you need to do. I know, I know, I know. Man under too deep all bleeping day. Mm -hmm. Do you have four guys that can generate pressure? Yes. Yes. Can you play man under too deep? Yes. Yes. You beat the Patriots. Congratulations. (laughs) Do not blitz this animal. He will figure you out. Do not put an end on James White. That's murder. Yep, don't do it. Why? Because... I got a great idea. Because you know why? Because of that freaking system that they run there. This is is what happened. This is why the Patriots do to people. Because they ran that boring system, you, as a defense, think it's a victory to hold them to three yards a a play. Yeah. And the Patriots are like, we wanted that. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, we're setting this up. Great. Awesome. Mm. Yep. Well, and it's not to do with Rex Ryan. <laughs> you know that's why you know you look at Schwartz defense and Schwartz defense was the perfect, uh, the perfect. We're gonna attack. line up and smack you in the mouth. That's it. We're, we're not blitzing. No, we're not go. gonna blitz. We're just gonna go four wide and perfect. that's it. Right. Wait, wasn't Schwartz part of that Eagles team that beat the Patriots? Oh, hey, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This all feels pretty familiar. It doesn't does, it? doesn't it? It all feels pretty familiar. <laughs> Schwartz was off the Belichick tree though. So was Coughlin. Right. They were both. Well, not. Coughlin wasn't well, off the tree. He was along with Parcells. Parcells, yeah. Um, but the fact still remains that in order to be competitive in this division, the Patriots are the gold standard. And, and you do, and, and people measure success by beating the Patriots. And it doesn't matter what you yeah. think about it. That's People measure success by how you do against the Patriots. It's just like you, we measure success in major leagues in the AL East by how can you compete with the Red Sox or the Yankees, depending on your perspective, Right. Or, or both. I mean, right? Yeah. You look at you look at the Blue Jays and the Orioles and you say, okay, well, listen. If you can't beat one of those teams, you're why even bother coming? Who's the other team in that division? Uh, it is Blue uh, Jays, the Orioles, Blue and... Jays, Orioles, Red Sox, Yankees, and uh, Tampa Bay, which oh. doesn't seem like they should be in the no, East, no. right? No, that's because like, those are all Northeast. That's teams, like putting but... an eight-year-old in a twelve and over league. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that and they're geographically nowhere near each other. You know, you look at all the other teams; they're all relatively close to each other. And then you gotta go down to Tampa. Um, but you know, it. I'm gonna buy you a map. What? T- Tampa's in Florida. That's well, a long ways from here. I know. Are you saying Baltimore's close to Toronto? <laughs> what well, ba- wrong with you? Baltimore's closer to Toronto. Baltimore is Baltimore to Toronto. I swear to God, if you're about to say Baltimore's closer to Toronto than it is to Tampa. I'm gonna no, smack I'm you just saying face. that Baltimore's. The, if you remove Baltimore from the division. Tampa Bay makes the definition of no sense because you're talking about three very northeast teams. Even Baltimore is considered a northeast team, right? When you take a line, you divide the country horizontally. Baltimore is a northeast team. Tampa is not. Anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm not. Why am I talking to you about baseball? Because don't get me going. The games that McDermott has played against the Patriots. Yes. Okay. We He's go lost back them all, hasn't he? Is yeah. he going for? Yeah, I think he is. Okay. Continue. Right. So. You're judging him on it, I'm not. That's where we were. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. My point remains that if the Bills go, let's say they go 7 and 9 this season, but okay. one of those victories is against the Patriots. Remove that victory from the Patriots. You have the exact same record as you did this last season. Yet you beat the Patriots, and people will say, nope, development. They're developing a winner. They beat the Patriots once. They beat them once, they can beat them again. I, and I'm telling you, Mo, that is the perspective. And that's the, that's the way that success is measured. At some point, though, you have to realize... That it's not the Patriots of 2012, it's not the Patriots of 2014, it's not the Patriots of 2007. Mm-hmm. You're beating a team that is gradually. No, you were wrong. They are. You were wrong. I'm telling you, 
It's at some point beating the Patriots is not going to mean anything. You can't be the defending Super Bowl champion and say your team's on the decline. You on this point, you can't. You are not right. I'm not, they're why? the best team because they're the best team. They've in football. been in a they steady the decline. They, they're the best team in football. They won the Super Bowl. No, they're not. That was last year. They're not the same team. I'm, Mario, you, you, I'm, you're not right here. You're not. You're not right. What here. are you talking? But dude, you can't they say are. You can't say they are on the decline. I said when steady. They, Decline. Steady decline. How many Super Bowls they won in the last five years? Two. Right. How can you be on a steady decline when you're still winning the cup? You're still doing it. You can do it. The Blackhawks were a tire fire. They won two. <laughs> they were going down fast, too. What I'm saying is that... All right. But I'll remove that. Okay. I'm just saying that at some point, it doesn't mean anything to beat them. Like, if you sweep them... Mm-hmm. And then they go eight and eight. Does it really matter? If you sweep the paper, if you sweep the Patriots and you go eight and eight, they go eight and eight. I'm saying. And I'm talking about the Bills. If you okay. sweep the Patriots and the Bills go eight and eight, you still remove those two Patriot wins, and your record is exactly the same as it was. But I want you to picture the tenor of the conversation of Bills fans. That you went 500 and you beat the Patriots twice. Hmm. I I don't judge McDermott though. I'm not going to judge him on that. And I know how insane this this fan base, notwithstanding, not not, not counting the Patriots wins. If they go eight and eight this year, people are gonna think it's a success. If they go eight and eight, beat the Patriots once. Wow, they're on their way up. If they go eight and eight, beat the Patriots twice, they're gonna be there's gonna be a, fa- a contingent of fans that are like, wow, Super Bowl, they're, they're amazing, and they're gonna say, why didn't they win this game or this game? Someone's inconsistent somewhere. Mm-hmm. McDermott needs to fix it. However, I'm not going to judge him whether or not he could be uh, as a legitimate coach. Because I think he's a legitimate coach. I think he's starting to learn it and, and get his feet wet and everything. And I think those wins will come. However, I think when those wins come, it's going to be past the time when beating the Patriots is relevant. Because if you beat the Patriots twice this year, but the Patriots go 8-8, eight eight, what did you really do? They were awful. In, the, in terms of Patriots, they were awful. I don't see the Patriots run as being dependent on Tom Brady. I just don't. Oh, I, I agree with you 100%. I, don't. I think it's b- the contingent on Belichick. Yeah, it's totally contingent on Belichick. Totally. Brady's trying to outplay Belichick. You know that, right? Yeah. Because if Belichick stays and Brady goes... Everybody knows that Brady... Everybody will know yeah. that it was Belichick. Yeah. I cannot wait. Side topic here. There's something in in football that's called soft money. It's illegal, right? CBA says you can't do it. You've, I, I, you, I, go ahead. I, I know this. I know. I just cannot wait. I cannot wait for the NFL to come smashing down on the Patriots when they hire Tom Brady as a consultant for $10 million a year. Because Tom Brady's saving the Patriots millions of dollars every year. He's by, never been the top paid quarterback in right, the NFL. Right, never. Not, not even really even barely no, sniffed the top five once. Nope. So, now he is, though. Now, now. right. But everybody says, oh, you know, he's he's trying to keep the team together. He's trying to keep the team together. He's trying to keep the team together. Well, yeah, you don't – if you're trying to tell me that the Patriots are on the up and up with the way that they negotiate their contracts with Tom Brady, you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Then you know that they've said, listen, Tom, don't worry. We'll take care of you the rest of your life. We'll hire you as a consultant. This money that we're Come not on. giving you right now, you'll get it. Don't worry. We'll just give it to you after your playing careers are over, which is illegal. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to promise money to a player that's not written in the contract. And there's a billion percent chance that the Patriots have already done that. Well, I mean, so I cannot wait for the NFL to come smashing down on them. And the they get draft picks stripped from them. Players get suspended. Coaches get suspended uh, well, after he retires. Well, I cannot wait. Well, I, it's going to happen. Paul, I don't know if you can make that claim seeing it, that Kraft has never been involved in any kind of shady dealings, has he? Really? I'm eating a Bavarian cream donut. You bring this up? You could have been eating age old cream. It would have been worse. <laughs> that silver fox. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the fact still remains the fans are always going to judge McDermott's initial success until he has a winning season. Oh, we got to take this. Are you judged as an NFL coach if you could beat Belichick or not? Are you judged as an NFL coach? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Damn it. He's the standard.
Thank you. He's the standard. I mean, that's what everyone, you know, everyone tries to be Belichick, and everyone thinks that if you get a piece of the Patriots, uh, like you got Scott Pioli a couple years ago, oh, we're going to be the Patriots now. No, you're not. There's only one Belichick. So, you know, it's just, that's, I mean, I don't judge you like that because I, I have integrity and honor, and I don't cheat when I play. So, you know, if I were an NFL team, I wouldn't judge you against Belichick. I would judge you against someone like maybe Walsh. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Most of the <laughs> professionalism, doesn't cheat. You know, guys like that. Because uh, we're having a current, you, you just kind of slid in on the one discussion we're talking about. That it said, is, is McDermott going to be uh, considered a legitimate head coach if he can't beat Belichick? And I was like, well, Reed's never beat him, and he's a legit head coach. Yeah, and Mario's initial point was yeah. Rex, Rex Ryan beat him. Does that make Rex Ryan a legitimate head coach? That was your point. I'm that fine. was your point. I said Rex Ryan, I don't, I don't consider him a legit head coach because it, whether or not he could beat Belichick. Well, I think... Rex Ryan's a clown. He's just a really good defensive innovator. Right. Right. No, I'm, He really I'm, is. He's a great defensive mind. He's just a, he's an idiot of that coach. You can't have a guy... I mean, if you're going to have a guy like that, you got a guy like that in Seattle, though. He's uh-huh. just a clown. You know, Carol's a, Carol has a fun time with the guys. He loves it. Um, and he's done, he's done a great job. But, you know, it doesn't usually work like that. Listen. You know, maybe if it was a little less of a clown... Brady would have one less ring. It's amazing how everybody <laughs> it's amazing how everybody forgets the fact that after you win a Super Bowl or two in Seattle that you know that Pete Carroll was turning his head to the Pez dispensers filled with Adderall that they were giving out over there. Half that team was all taking Adderall against the league and half of them were suspended for it. This went on for years. And then a Super Bowl happens, everybody just forgets about it. Well, I, I think the uh, I think well, the drug the NFL drug position, anyway, is a joke. Oh, I mean, sure. Um, you know, I got to be honest, and I know I, I, I know this firsthand from a few players. There's a lot of players in the league that smoke weed, and they don't smoke weed because they want to go to a Snoop Dogg concert. <laughs> they smoke weed because they're in chronic pain. Yeah. So, you know, when you have uh, 250, 350 pound men banging into each other 80 times a game, guess what? You're going to need some chemistry to help you out. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I can't hold them. I mean, I, I don't fall for that, man. I mean, I, nobody wants to be in pain. Well, not only that, but these guys, like these offensive linemen are carrying 40 more pounds than their body's designed to carry. You know, like it's, oh, yeah. you know, it's it's crazy how they've figured it out. You know, like the, the NFL has figured out how to max somebody out and how to maintain that weight and keep them alive for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's it, it's really amazing. It, it really is amazing. When you look at guys like, uh, you know, Jeff Saturday, mm-hmm. you know, he goes on ESPN, he looks, he looks fit and trim, and, you know, he looks like a freaking cornerback yeah. with a beard. Yeah. So, um, what, what, about you know, your, he, look, what about your neighbor? Yeah, look at my neighbor. My neighbor looks awesome. Like, he's, he's ripped. He's shredded. He's... I mean, I probably weigh more than my neighbor right now, and the guy's, you know, a Hall of Famer, basically. You know what his neighbor is? No, I don't know who his neighbor is. <laughs> Alan Fanica. Come on! Yeah, he moved next door to him. Come on! Are you serious? Yeah. What? What did he say? He didn't know. He didn't know Alan Fanica was I your didn't neighbor. I know Fanica was your neighbor. What? No. Everybody knows that. I post that everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't have social media. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, no, no. I write it on post-it notes. I leave it out. I leave it at you know, at the In and Out Burger. I post it all over my house. I'm taking you off my wall. That's not how this works. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. I, I'm getting really tired of these freaking Thursday night games too. Can we do something about that? Can we stop the Thursday night craziness? I would like to. Can we, can we just have games on Sunday? Can we? Can we just do that? I don't even need Monday night football anymore. <laughs> I really don't. Like, just put it on Sunday. And then you do. You ruin everyone's fantasy lineup. <laughs> now it's Thursday morning and you got to decide if you're going to play a guy that's day to day or game time decision. Right. Or you can. Get... Look out for the small people, please. Right. Or you get pissed at that one owner that keeps making waiver moves and keeps cutting guys on Wednesday night that play on Thursday because they don't clear waivers unless the commission goes in and clears it. You're just like, come on, Brian. What the hell? It's always Brian. What a jerk. <laughs> Mike, can you oh, explain really? to me why all Alabama players come out of come out of college and they get hurt? 
and they require surgery immediately after they get drafted. Uh, um, you know what? That is that, that's a that's an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in a riddle. I don't. I can't. I can tell you that I have to kill you. No, Saban. Um, Saban does not allow you to get surgery during. during <laughs> so. Ski, why do you sound like you're underwater? <laughs> I can barely hear you, man. Guy. Do you know how the mic works? Ski, you got to talk into the mic. You can't wrap it around your shirt. <laughs> he said why he did want to call us. I rose to you. What all right, Mike. Enjoy your time at Lowe's. Thank you for calling in today, and we will. Uh, Thanks, guys. Maybe we'll be. We'll, maybe you'll make an episode this week. <laughs> That'd be fun. It'd be great. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't get to bash closer anymore, but you know, do the. I think. I think it comes to the discussion of you have to understand what perspective you have. If you're, uh, if you're, if you're willing to take the the you know the regular usually accepted thought process that Belichick is who you have to beat to be successful in the NFL, Okay. then yes, right? McDermott has to beat Belichick at least once every season to show that he can be a legitimate NFL coach. Is that necessarily the way that we think? No, it isn't, right? But I think it's all about perspective. You have to understand what perspective you're coming from. If, if you think Belichick is the gold standard for NFL coaches – then, yeah, McDermott has to beat him. It's it's not negotiable. If you think Belichick's yeah. a cheater and his record's tainted... Which many people do. Which many people do. Then you have to you have to go other places to look to see what you know what your measure of success is. I think anybody that's in the <clears throat> AFC East has that unfair yep. thing with them. Yep. Um, now, am, am, does he... You're 100% right. Does he have to beat Belichick? Well, he's in his division. Yeah. He has you to beat, beat him. him. You gotta if beat you're him. not in Belichick's division, it's not as, right. as daunting of a task. Gase, Flores, and, and McDermott all have that unfortunate incident. Right. They, 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 twice a year, they have to beat this man. Not only once, they have to try to beat him twice. Right. All of them. To try to knock the, the, the king off the mountain. Mm -hmm. But I don't... I, I'm not personally going to judge him, his legitimacy as a coach... If he doesn't, he has to though. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm making an argument against myself. Well, where you you're in his division, you have to beat him to move forward, get in the playoffs, be successful, right? Have it have a run here and there. But if they go ten and six and they lose to the Patriots twice, now you got a problem, right? Because that wild card that becomes a problem. That bothers yeah. me. Um, yeah, the, the wild card becomes a problem because you have to sweep the rest of your division and you can only use, lose the NFC games. Yeah. That's it. Like if you lose any, if, if you, you win any, every, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you drop any of the AFC games, you're in trouble. So that's four. So you're six and two in your own in the, mm -hmm. in the conference, right? That makes playoffs, right? But that's what I'm saying. But you're you rolling both, the dice there, though. exactly. If you drop both With to the 10 Patriots, wins. yeah. If you drop both to the Patriots, you got to win every AFC game. So if you don't start the season with the win, if you if you're not if you're not you know three and zero. Oh, Going into the Patriots in Week Four, your playoff run could—that could be the beginning of the end by Week Four. 